kill you. All right, let's just run with the PowerPoint. I will come back to that. Can you please go to slideshow? Great, can you please walk while you're wearing it? All right. Now. Anyway, hopefully we'll get somebody to help teach us about uh, technology. The PowerPoint is loading, now we go. Put the PowerPoint now. Why is it loading? Can, we, can I use my own MacBook set of all this all the way? Okay, fine. Please, let me let get them to get this. Oh, Next slide. Quickly, quickly. Next slide. All right. This is our objective for this session is to stimulate accountability in research projects and forms. Next slide. Can you, is that is it running? Concept, the planning, 
participation presentation for approval and funding. Implementing it and then money. So the five core stages concept, the design of planning, the getting approval of funding, implementing it, and then money. Five stages of our the life cycle of any project management. What is the scope of the work? What is the time? What is the cost? How do you measure performance? And there's an equation that can show that cost is a function of performance time and scope. What are the issues to think about? Whether it's a work, for example, when it's about my project, I, I brought in 1997, I was working on a project with Lagos State Family Support Program. And my company put in 50 million pounds to build a health center, and I was the manager of that. Then also from 1998 to 2014, I supervised the project that I ran in Sabah Gideon Iran, where we did about seven papers that I'm sure up to almost one million dollars that I've kept through over those 14 years that I was running all the time. So those are the things we want to say about project. So if you ask what are you doing, why should it be your justification? Who will do it and with what resources? These are things all of us here do. For a recent project, must have your protocol, and I'm meeting several protocols. My area is in clinical trials, developing of medicine and vaccines. That's my core specialty. All right, so you must have a team member. You must think about the money, how you will disseminate, and how you're going to be accountable. The protocol is the book for the project, for the research. A number of people have committed things to put. Their contest officer, they say, this is their report. A report of a project is not a paper you publish. No, it's not. It must have a detailed technical report showing what you did and the protocol was guide. I know many a time people just got money for all kinds of good reasons but they did not understand that there is a template that was followed. Human resources, please, if you're going to do research, don't put people you don't agree with, because you'll be recorded all of the time. So you must be a functional team, you must have some level of multidisciplinary as well, you must also have some level of hierarchy. Who is the PI? Who is the co-investigator? Who is what? And most importantly, you must also have a defined finance function. Who is keeping the money? And it's best not to allow the same person be the team leader and also the money keeper. You must start the skills you need if you're going to lead the team. Negotiation skills, team building skills, motivating people, clear communication. And then, how about money? The Bible says a good name is better than silver or gold. I have not chased money. Rather, money has just me because I've had a good deal. That is key. People think research, wait, Fatsi became the single, single, the top and singular researcher in Ife for years. And about six months after the world research grant in Ife came from the state. The same I have done over the years. Hey, the local that vaccine used in Nigeria today, I didn't think that around in Nigeria. And it was a lot of money. Plenty of money. I had a team of 30 people, I employed for two years. And I was doing my work as professor, as consultant, and to run that project. And I run several projects like that. So you must be honest. You must have a bank account. I ran I mean, from my educated project, I would what I did reports. We wrote salaries of people. I had records and records and records and records. And then one of those things, when you are buying things for your research project, buy the best. Because you are likely to be there. Then you buy a useless printer. When you just have finish it, who will be heading, who will be heading the bad printer you have got? You. So buy the best. But then the scope of the budget. You must follow your timeline. Must disseminate our IPR project from last week. Which do you have something on what now? Why is it coming? 
represented it at random. I would have published it in four in four written form. I must report to your sponsor. You must obtain receipt. You must keep electronic copy. Must establish a process. And let me say all of you boss read. Boss read is too slow. And they must make up. Boss are your head. Boss read, brief is song. Uh, what happened with Bosri? Raise your hand. We must not continue to process documents for three weeks. It must stop. Don't blame audit. Don't blame anybody else. We cannot continue. We want a document. We went to this. We went to that. No. I mean, you saw what he said. If we are with the innocent project, Bosri did an audit because of strike. Look at how look at the community cost. The number one element of life is not money, it's time. It's time. And so we must be able to do this because we need to present a detailed financial report. You can't win a major grant. Even the ranking we did, we have to submit the number of university documents, isn't it? That's the way. When I don't do it, it was it was play. What well, was three nights? Good sleep. We have to send it to me, we have to go through it, and we need to have a lot of reports and policies that we need to do. Okay? And this is not moving anymore. Okay, please manually put me. And if we have to do one document, what I want to show you is in that one document, how we wrote an inside report, I couldn't find the final report. Are you able to put it on? If you told me this sister was dead, I would have given my own now. Okay, final slide is there. If you do your fair execution, you will gain experience. You'll be satisfied. You will gain fair recognition. You will advance in your career. I told people I joined last month in 99. And by the seventh day, I was ready to come because I think they should just quit. By the night I became a professor from L1 to full professor. In fact, I learned it by 2006. That was too much, but then I said, please don't promote me yet. And three other times, I was like, hey, there's too much for Allah, just the bit. Because there was an hour that I won't apply for this hour. So three other times, I became professor. You get to do more projects. The welcome cross grant, I wasn't part of the initial, they invited me to come and join. That's what you do when you have a group. So, as a university, we would need to change our orientation. It's not from selling handouts, uh, project for students, uh, selling big tokens, collecting money through the back door. All that must stop. Hey, can you imagine now how much money we will give? Okay, when I did the vaccine study, I think ESG paid me initially about 100 million, and we gave the hospital 10 million. Say, go and spend away like three months. So what we did is that the next day, we are going to go after 135 million. That's about 35 million. For doing nothing. That's because they had an academic and professor who they cared for him. That's the key. So can we go to the word document if you can find it? Where are they going now? Word document. Where did you get off? Alright. If they don't show you, I want you to show us that what the IBR is all this, all this you will get. Is that one more slide there? Alright. So now we don't have the time for QA. What I want to what I want to show you was what do I think the I, IBR in the last one? So 1.7 million. That's a real money. Very small money. That's a real thing to have one. That came into the party in that and said, no, I need this project for me. That was in the bad one. I think you got today, that's a professor, I'm going to call professor. From all the things I've mentored there and what things I've done. They may able to show the word document, put up a page, but it's not good. Uh, you really? So I've used my system. Those are my system. See? I think we will give ICT a better, a better computer. Yes. This one is a disgrace to us, it doesn't define us. It's an ancient system. I'm sure the RAM is full. Please don't bring those kind of things next time to any major meeting. If you don't have one, I will buy you one. Ah. Yes, now. 
This one just want my husband to show it now. People are saying they are ready, they are ready, they are ready. Wonderful. That's it, Ashiru. So please, next time I'm presenting, don't use them at all. Just take them from my MacBook. Can you please bring my MacBook and connect it now? Ah. Please, okay, while we're getting set, before we take a break, I have a question about, you want to ask? I'll take two questions, so that it's not just talking, 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 talking. Two questions? Are you looking Greek? Okay, Tamino. Yes, Dr. Can we give Dr. Tamino a second mic? Okay, come to the front. Ajani, please drop on that. Up on that. And do it. Thank you, Fisi. Uh, I just um, don't do it possible, sir, to demystify this thought, especially that we have in management and social sciences. That if you look at most of the grants won by researchers, globally and in Nigeria, they are won by scientists instead. Instead. Especially those of you who are in medical sciences. Uh, Professor Fatusi and there to that. Professor Fatusi and there to that. In social sciences, Management sciences, humanities. I, I observe it is very, very difficult to win a global and huge grant. If you are talking of if you are talking of top grant winners in Nigeria today. This is how we discover that over 90% of that are in STEM. So I want you to demystify that if you can, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This was an interim report we submitted to last week. IPR 1.7 million. You can see it's a 60 page document. All right? Now, let's go on. Let's go on. It's our ethical approval and all that. All, all of that. What I want to show is that. Receipts of payments we photocopied, we kept. That's, what I, that's the essence of showing this in the world of women. Go on, yeah. That's the FGD. Go on. Okay. This is bank statement. For that one point seven million. I kept it, they gave it to me. I kept it in my GT account, not my regular salary account. Go ahead, try a button and show the next slide. Go on, scroll up. Go on. Go on. So it's a bank statement. Go on, that's the last bit of the bank statement. Now look at the collect how much is this? 4,000 naira. For what? Project plastic, whatever. Photocopy. Next one. Another, this is a bank statement. But tell her to give people money. Go on. That's another photocopy for whatever. Photocopy whatever they did. Go on. Alright. This is for paying for transport. Go on. Alright. This is another one to pay telephone people, telephone charge card. So everything. Not only did you have photocopies, we made them into PDF copies, to put it down so that this was something we got to it in. It's still permanently for me, in my system. Tell me, so, I have collected money for this one. I just go back to my system and talk, very photocopies. For buying petrol, for giving people money, we kept them. That is the kind of record you must keep. Now, talk about social sciences and the arts. One, there is obviously more money in the sciences. 
than in the arts. That's not in contention. But there are huge grants in the arts and social sciences. Plenty. If you look at, if you go to the British, particularly, they have a funded system now that you will see a lot of money into arts, into creativity, you see a lot of money into, well, a lot of money in the arts is now linked to working as cross-cultural groups. Okay, people in sociology work with us. People in marketing work with us. For example, how did the Biagra get to serve? How did people, when we talk about condom use, we talk about social marketing. That's not a much better for social marketing. If people are in sociology, why are fighting that degree? Why are you social marketing? So, I think the problem is that when a people in the social sciences do not publish widely, Many are not on Google Scholar. Many are not publishing in top great journals. Like, what do you say? My PhD student in Australia. By the time we finished this PhD, we had published five papers. And all the papers were published in journals that the university, University of Northwest uh, in Sydney, paid for. In fact, the one was British Journal, British Global Health Journal. The fee we paid was three thousand pounds. It didn't come from my pockets. Even when I published one, one the grant we won from last week, we published it in plus one. I paid a thousand and fifty dollars at at publication stage. That was my own money. Because my team couldn't afford it. So there is money and it takes discipline. It takes effort. It takes a lot of painstaking processes. It takes also almost not sleeping. And you cannot devote your energy. I don't have the private medical practice. Sheriff does not. We just don't answer the right public health position. That's what we have done all our lives. Even here, as we see, I'm still heavily involved in research. My team has told about five papers this year. Last time was 11. That's what it takes. I still. I may still examine dissertations for a colleague. I still go and give lectures. I have another time to give at the protocol at the conference. If you don't apply yourself, you cannot become better. So all those who think oh, there is no money, there is money. If you look for it. But you see, nobody will give you money if you don't start somewhere. And let's not publish like what you say in the social journal. Publish in reputed journals. And there are several. Nice time shows the last money for people in economics. That's why I used to have a lot of research grants. I don't want to become of them. All of my am I correct? I can do it grants for myself. We have just linked our Greek people to NCDC. So they can start working with them. I think that's all. So that we can move to the next se segment. Okay. So, uh, to both the corona complement what the presenter just said, I don't realize the vice president. It's to say that so currently I am in a research team in NASA. We are running a 50 million naira research grant from Sagaso. Right here, and uh, yes, uh, another guy, PI, I'm the co, co investigator. What we also did was not only to just to invite and include people from the social sciences, we are sociologists, uh, the Abusu is there. We also incorporated for the keeping of the account somebody from Bosphorus, whose job is just to account for income and expenditure on the project. And that's what we are doing. Thank you. So good group. One the NRF in the last year, I worked with them. They got about 32 million. They were social sciences. Looking about was it real? I helped them to find tune. It was also yeah. So we had them to win that grant. Then I 32 million back. We won two in my last year as uh, okay. I want to employ everyone that we can start from somewhere. Don't dream about the millions or thousands of dollars. Like you can even win as small as small as the idea. I want one, it was just two million. 
without me now, it is something. Gradually, when you now have a report, you can now graduate into something bigger. We have advised that we are giving 5 million a week. Only 12 people applied. That is not a good In fact, as I don't be close to it, only four people had applied. Maybe they thought, but we are not serious. But sir, make the money available. We have approved. It's not planned for, but we want to stipulate the reason. So you can make more people apply. So next year, we will make it 10 or 15 million as the budget will carry. Or 20. In fact, by the time I left last year, we put 20 million into research grant for diversity. I don't think they've been placed about their five that I left it. Maybe we'll say we can take us to 20 million next year. Internal, not IPR, from my university. I was having people apply. I think we're done. Please come and invite uh, Thank you so much for taking us to the military. We appreciate what it takes to be more advantage in the rest of the world presenting project management reports. Because of in a little bit of time, we go to the next lecture, and I have the honor to invite Dr. Mrs. Defiant for our next talk. And in addition to that, Mr. Adebayo, please have come forth for our citation. Dr. Mrs. Taiwo Falashade Fahel was born on the 25th of September 1964 in Bali. For the ladies' family of Ulubu on Lagos Island, he had a primary education at St. Teresa's Convent School in Bali. After which he proceeded to our Lady of Apostles Secondary Grammar School, Mary Way, also in the Bali. She obtained her first degree in education history from the prestigious University of Ife, the Anglo Perfect University in 1986. Thereafter, Mrs. Sipaye read service to the nation during the first day NYC in 1986 at the Lagos Anglican Secondary School as a teacher. Upon completion of her service year, she proceeded to the University of Lagos to acquire a master's degree in educational administration in 1987. In her quest for intellectual growth, she went further to complete a PhD program in educational administration in 2008. Dr. Ipaye started her career as a teacher at the King Ado High School, Lagos Island, in 1987. Thereafter, she worked as an administrative officer at the Lagos State Polytechnic before transferring her service to the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, 1989, where she rose to the position of principal assistant secretary. In 2009, she was appointed deputy registrar at the University of Lagos. The position she held till she became the registrar of the University of Lagos on August 1, 2013. In 2018, she successfully completed an industrious five-year tenure during which she positively repositioned the registry and the administrative activities in the university. She committed herself fully to making the university a top-class institution that thrives on excellent and electronic administration. She was able to ensure effective and efficient service delivery within the registry during her tenure. She spent her sabbatical year at the HR department for Vital Food, where she made positive contributions to the primary resource unit. 
She is currently the director of the Author Valley Digital Research Center at the University of Lagos. Dr. Ibaya has served in various committees outside her primary duties, which include a membership of the Association of Commonwealth University Steering Committee on Human Resource Communities, member also State Administrative and Technical Staff Advisory Committee, Board Secretary, University of Lagos Women's Society, Nursery and Primary School, Vice Chairman, Anupa Unila Grant, and General Secretary. University of Ego Women's Society, where she piloted a number of reforms. She is currently the president of the University of Ego's Women's Society. She has served as an external resource person to several universities on appointment of registrar and senior administrative personnel. Dr. Mrs. Taiwo Polashade is a fellow of uh, some professional association, amongst which are Nigerian Institute of Management, Tata Institute of Public Management of Nigeria, member Association of University Administrators, the UK, Association of Nigerian University Professional Administrators. She is also an administrator for SF and has delivered lectures, seminars on university administration both within and outside the country. Mrs. Empire has also authored and co-authored a number of books, including The University Administrator, a practitioner's handbook, which has become a reference point for university administrators, not only in the University of the world, but in other universities. Dr. Ibae is a model for integrity, hard work, and commitment to set goals. She demonstrates almost professionalism in the conduct of her job. She enjoys mentoring and motivating colleagues, which she does through real exemplary leadership qualities and unparalleled administrative excellence. Her advocacy for positive change is well known. Dr. Ifaye is happily married to engineer Olaji Ifaye and they are blessed with three children. Ladies and gentlemen, please round of applause for this time of Excited. 
when you listen to somebody like Professor Kago, who has had the opportunity and play to hear, then you want, want to ask yourself, what am I going on with? This can be good. So I have uh, preach protocol, I skip protocol, but I just want to say it's a big privilege and an honor for me to be here to talk about something that I'm always very passionate about professionalism in administration. When I do like this, I don't want to do like this. When I do like this, I don't understand that. I am happy to respond when the PC uh, Professor Fakusi was uh, talking about it. But you almost embarrassed the vice president. Thank God that I'm an insider. I've been a product of this. Our ICT definitely needs some, some assistance. Yes, carry on to this. You already have this information for standing room. Next slide. Anyone want to say next slide when I ask you to say next slide? Next slide. Next slide is supposed to be protocol. Please skip the protocol. Move on to the next slide after this slide. Please move on. So I have just 20 minutes to make this. What are we going to achieve at the end of this presentation? We want to ensure that those of us who are administrators, and I'm not just talking about registry people, pardon me if I lapse into that occasional issue, because as you will see later on, when you're talking about administration, goes beyond just registry. Uh, the Bosley has been at the bashing end all day because of grants. But we want us to reflect on our administrative practice, our procedures, and how we have been professional in this type of activities and making it effective so that the service we are rendering to this community is an effective one. We want to show that we can demonstrate that we have a clear knowledge of what it truly means to be a university. You know, we have moved from the polytechnic structure where it's just all about being practical. In the university, it's a well-structured organization and it must follow procedures. If this talks about policies, we must follow those policies. And that is the only thing we can ensure we are delivering our service effectively. I want us, at the end of this program, to key into the vision of this university and work consciously to achieve the vision of being a world class university. And we will want this. So, the quick note, please move on. Universities all over the world are defined either by their, their ownership, whether it's private or public. Whether it is uh, private, uh, whether it's young, whether it's specialized university, like that of Professor Fatusi from Minimum, or even Lasso State, which is a technology based university, or Lasso, which is generalized in nature. But one, the goal is to say, please go on. Please go on. They have one common goal, and that is teaching, research, and community service. That's what we are all supposed to do in next week. Look at the tertiary educational system. It's characterized by well-defined administrative support. You have the vice chancellor, you have the register, you have the master, the best librarian, and we have different departments which are often specialized to handle defined tasks. In this room we have lecturers. In this room we have people from works. We have people from ICT. Look at that system. You are a government institution. Our stakeholders are the members of staff, be it academic or the non teaching staff. We also have the students, be they full time members or part time members. And you have the parents and the vendors out there. Let's go. So we, we have different professionals, like I said earlier on. In this room, we have administrators, lecturers, accountants, lawyers, auditors, technology, security, medical personnel. Everything we are a microcosm of the entire world out there. And we have different customers. This one, we have the internal customers, which are those who we have identified earlier. We have the external customer, all those who receive the output of the system. I mean, at the end of the day, we will push our students to go and do NYC. That is the first starting point with the outside world. And the assessment of the products of this institution is what will turn on the brand we are trying to promote. Please come. Uh, there's been a the 
research that identified 16 major customers of the university system. This was in 2003. When you look at these customers, you ask yourself, am I giving these people service? We seem to think that education is just to teach. But look at it. We have current students who are already there, whether they like it or not. They are here. They are stuck. Decide to go on strike and keep them. They are trying in their destiny. You have prospective students, you have lecturers, members of faculty, you have parents of students, you have the general staff, you also have the alumni, those who have graduated. Then you also have, from the external side, those who are vendors in the community supplying, and then you have other universities they are competing with. Now, sister, you want to compete with many lads. Am I right? <laughs> The Earth government against this Ministry of Education, National University Commission, Budget and Planning Office, Tech Fund, all these are agencies that we must interact with and we must learn how to deal with them so that the job of the university is properly carried out. Among the staff are the non-team and others in the post staff, as well as the lecturers. When any of these ones cough, something happens to the student. The students who and the day they decide to barricade it, we know that our movement is restricted. We either have them as undergraduate, postgraduate, either part time or non part time enrolled in them, as in uh, those who are in pre degree programs. Similarly, the business community, those who are suppliers to the system. This So let's look at the university setting because we need to understand the structure. For the principal officers, we have this changes from one university to the other, you have the vice chancellor who is at the upper most. And I must credit uh, Professor Musoya. You have sat down here with that pile in your office waiting. Those appointments, I'm sure you ought to be on a Zoom link in that. But you have left it all because of your passion and your commitment to get this university properly positioned. And to support him are other key principal officers. When you have the purpose of some of the colleges, if you are operating the colleges, then definitely the director of academic is a very key person. It's all quality assurance and others. So when you are looking at the university management, you find that every one of us that is involved in management in the university is an administrator. And an administrator is that professional who helps in implementing policies in the university. Very key word, policies. As professional administrators, we are graduate members. For me, for those of us in the ranks, you find us there in the body, you find us there works. You have the engineers there, medical center, you have the medical doctor, ICT, you have the uh, computer engineers and scientists. We are expected to provide necessary services that will drive the goal of the university. As administrators, uh, we are supposed to be knowledgeable about all the rules guiding this institution. When National Tech Transition it was done by an act, by a law, an enabling law, we must be knowledgeable about every segment of that law. And we must have an area of information that will help us in implementing the policies that will be formulated from time to time and make sure that we impart this knowledge to every member of this community, whether internal or external. It's time for our business to ensure that our records are adequately managed and issued appropriately and promptly upon request. I was excited when the visit to pay to bring his laptop to show us receipts, documentation. That's what administration is about. We must ensure that when the rules are made, policies are given, we follow them to the letter. And we must all abide by the external rules that guide the operations of this university. And it is only when we do this that we can render effective service that will make for an efficient university administration. What's the effect? The effect is that we end up putting in the graduate students who will flourish and you can compete favorably in the knowledge market. The same thing with our staff. I mean, all this empowerment about having teams, building teams, 
getting grant writing proposal is to encourage. Today we must ask ourselves this question. Is, it, is the way we are practicing administration today, is it in line with what professionalism means? And are we working in accordance with the expected work ethics?
what is the quality of the service you render? Is it one love for the goose, another for the gander? Do you do this only because it's from your town or your ethnic group? Or is the, this is um, causing daughter's son? The same law must apply to everybody. Ensure that our customers, whether they are internal customers or external, we satisfy them. I tell people that, look, attend to me the way you want to attend to you if you are the one on the other side of the table. But often times are not. Many of us have empires when we are sitting behind the table and we say this is our time to be king of the manor. This shouldn't be. This is not professional. And it doesn't need for, to have to work class in that way. Let's be fair and equitable to everybody. And let's ensure that all our actions will complement whatever policy the system has put in place. Next slide. We must be transparent, we must be accountable, and we must start the ability speak, ensure that we engage every stakeholder at the appropriate level and that our actions are always prompt. Three days I'm blaming on this because uh, the snail that is carrying the memo from two dozen away is still crawling. That is not being responsive to the demands of a world class investment. Next slide. So in closing, I stumbled on this and I always use it all the time. Remember, every work is the self-portrait of the person who needs it. Autograph your work with excellence. And remember that it is you and you alone who can make a difference in your schedule. Whether you don't post posted there or you don't got there. We had a presentation on one of our uh, registrars then, Mrs. Stephen, they said, with every person, ask yourself, what additional value can I introduce to my schedule? When taking decision, am I fair to all concern? If you can answer this with a fear and a clear conscience, then you are on the right path to being a true professional. When I finished my time of five years as registrar in 2018, you know, it was like, okay, what do you do? You still have some 10, 15 years to go. What next? We had this atom value for the digital research center. I was supposed to have been gifted to the university. But well, after completing it, the donor was told that if you give the university, they will run it down. And the place was locked for almost three years, well into my tenure. So just as I was finishing, as God would have it, the current vice chancellor was deputy vice chancellor then, Professor Fanashadi Ushala. She now knew one of the board members and approached that this place is locked up. What do you have there? She went, inspected. She came to me and asked me, I what you plan to do after you finish your journey. I said, I'll go on sabbatical, and after that, I'll decide. I said, come and sit this. I think you can talk that place around. Why did she say that? It means I must have done one or two things that struck her. And when she said that, when we both went to the place, I was like, fantastic place. Please, if you ever come to me, like, this is a company for digital research center. Before COVID, we were the go to place for digital technology. You could present, have a representation from any part of the world. And you could have facilitator also make presentation. And everybody could respond to it. During COVID, it was the go to place. The idea when they started was to have it as a business center. Unfortunately, the university invested heavily on the five outings. So everybody had computers in one find the office. So that was one of the things that people did. But I said, we are going to open this place up for workshop, training, seminars. Why did I do that? I thought out of the box. And today is a beautiful story. Everyone, all the lecturers, the one who go here, they think I'm making money here. <laughs> but we are not making it because we are charging minimal fees to ensure that the structure is well because they use the finest quality. One turn up like this. When somebody when it got bad and we wanted to change was just it was only 27,000, now it's 57,000. But we changed it. I told my people, nothing must sleep overnight on the year, on the place, on attended to. And we have kept that place. This is my fifth year. And I now also be out of that place to go somewhere else and make a difference. Please, like this, so we did. When you are on any schedule, I, 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 also, I was asked these questions at interviews. I said, in five years' time, what do you want to be known for in this place when you leave, when you retire? 
what do you want to remember this? If there is nothing we are taking from you today, remember that excellence is never an accident. It's the result of high intention. I went there with the best of potential. Sincere efforts, and I focused on my effort, intelligent directing, skillful execution, and the vision to see obstacles as opportunities. God bless you. I thank you very much. I'd like to thank my sister, Dr. Taiwo Pai, for this wonderful, wonderful presentation. For me, I just be that of persistent working together. Since almost 30 years, I've known that. So it's not only because I know. Uh, we have been talking about, about BOSA, but let us just stop. We also know we can improve. Somebody told me that they began to get transcript for the last 10 months. People are complaining to you, about you all the time to me. Why are people like terms and records? I think it's in the open. If I want pastor as a rust, who did not to help me get his son's record has spoken to me. I've said the very thing to you. I tell you, isn't it so? Yes. So we're not guilty a good image for university. With tardiness, people coming late. Even for my days, there's a lot we need to improve upon. Or is it something is 2 a.m., 2 p.m., deliver? It's, not, it's very important. Then I frequented up to Shalajai. Isn't it? I don't know if it's your first time versus my friend. I just said, my dean will call you. He did not call you. That's the reputation. I just, I, just, I just gave him his number. That's the image you must build. You mentioned my name, many versus they will run. That's what we want to build. So we'd like to thank you very much. We are grateful. You know you are my sister, best in that person. Thank you. All right, this is all I believe. Come and give a good presentation. Fortunately, the register is the way, so it's woman doing the registrar's job now, and it's her job to present to another lady. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, but I'm to be called upon to present this platform to you. We appreciate this afternoon, my brother. You have shared with us for the wealth of experience for today's one day, or this uh, one day workshop orientation. We appreciate you very much, ma'am. And on behalf of the Vice Chancellor Professor Ujumiba Ustoya, the management of the university and other staff, I present this to you, my Dr. Tawi Ifaye. We appreciate you for coming and hope we'll you call upon the next time. Thank you very much.
arose to become director of audit, internal audit in last year, and then became person. It was an example of starting from very small and getting to the top. He cannot be here today because of the exigencies of work. We are saying a most able deputy. He is also my friend. Deputy Bossa, Mr. Taiwo Omoyi, to come to present. I have been here all day. He's been chatting me. Bossa sent me. Bossa sent me. And I said, thank you for coming. So we will hear a citation about Mr. Lainka, which I sent to us, which will be read by Mrs. Odufison. So we are putting her on notice and on the spot. It's a, a commitment that possibly will change. And then, obviously, a person will present the plaque when we are done. And then we'll take the two sessions, and then we'll take the presentation of Professor Bushala last. So, I have the singular honor to present the profile of Mr. Said Babatunde Olayinka. Mr. Said Babatunde Olayinka was born on 26 June 1968 in Lagos. Because of his appointment, before his appointment as the boss of Lagos State University in June 2018, Mr. Olayinka had held many positions in the boss department. Directorate of Internal Audit of the University, the last of which was the position of the Director of Internal Audit. Mr. Said Babatunde Olayinka was appointed into the service of the University as a clerical assistant in 1986. Mr. Olayinka has in the last 32 years rose through the ranks, serving at different times as Senior Purchasing Clerk, Assistant Executive Officer, Deputy Head, Accountant 2 at the Cash and Revenue Office. He was also appointed as the Senior Accountant Salaries and Wages Unit, Head Principal Accountant at the Salaries and Wages Unit, Head Chief Accountant at the Reconciliation Unit before his appointment as the Director of Internal Audit in 2012. His academic attainments are no less impressive. In 1985, he obtained his O-Level certificate from Ansarudin Grammar School, Surulere, Lagos. He proceeded to Yaba College of Technology, where he obtained his OND in accounting in 1992, and later obtained his HND in the same course in 1996. Mr. Olayika holds a Bachelor of Science degree, Upper Division in Accounting Education from the Lagos State University, and in 2001, Mr. Laika obtained a postgraduate diploma in planning studies at Lagos State University. He also obtained his master's in business administration in the same university. Mr. Laika is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, is a member of the Nigeria Institute of Management. Mr. Laika has also served as the auditor of a Bear Division Forum. He enjoys reading, listening to music, dancing, and socializing. Mr. Saeed Babatunde Olayinka is married and blessed with children. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Saeed Babatunde Olayinka, Bossa, Lagos State University. Yeah, Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Mr. Raj Nantelo, sir. It is a great uh, privilege and opportunity for me to be here this afternoon to present the topic on behalf of the Boston Legal Team, who is uh, unavoidably absent. Before I proceed, I want to advocate the fact that of this uh, institution, who is like a mentor to me. He was a former uh, director, 
research and innovation for great institutions, Ghost State University. And I remember when I was at the time to make a, a, a presentation in connection with the university ranking, we always come to our office and the poster will invite him to me. And once we have learned about him, the very discipline and he doesn't tolerate nonsense. So we always, when he wants something, he wants to get some time. That's what about him. And I also want to be permitted to appreciate some of my posts here. I want to appreciate um, Professor Atikbele, the former director of the Center for General School in Lagos State University. I also want to appreciate uh, uh, Professor Bas uh, Basira, uh, the former director of and this program because he must. And in Absentia, I want to extend post activity to our former Vice Chancellor, the man who came to Lagos University to turn everything around and project the image of the university in a good light. He assisted the poster, the present poster, to turn around the portion department so that we can provide a very financial function, which incidentally happened to be the topic in discussion today. I really want to appreciate and I want to thank him. Furthermore, I want to thank the former presenter, uh, Dr. Mrs. Ifaye. This is the second time I'm meeting her. I met her when she came to last for a training program. I happened to one of the participants there. So when I was blessed by her teaching, so I made up my mind that whenever we have a picture to present something, I will invite her. So during our alumni Almagera meeting, so I reached out to her and I introduced myself to her. Finally, she, she pointed to the idea and she made her presentation from Canada. So I really want to appreciate her thank her for her coming. So immediately I saw her here. I still put up and went to visit her. So to my great person, this is Saeed, Ola Inka, Patunde, I really want to appreciate her. I want to thank her. I don't know what you find in me. I'm not the only deputy who started the question. I often time we have something to present outside. And I was not able to accept President Fiscali to hold the so I really want to appreciate you and pray to God that I'm not going to disappoint you. So on the on the topic today, uh, uh, effective financial function. So the discussion guys. And effective financial function for university. As you all know, the bursary is a department that provides financial function to the university. And for bursary department to keep into the vision of the Vice Chancellor, they have to be supported. And that's why when the VC mentioned something, mentioned negative remark about the bursary department, I am not, not pleased about it to hear that. And because of that, I want to just advise all the units in the department, look for, talk, look for people who are competent to work with you. And in last week, there is no request, there is no, there is no mail that we stay more than 48, 48 hours in a unit without being attended to. And so this happened, that head of unit will be removed immediately. So do for competent people who work with you, sir. And we got there. So on the special guide, we have an introduction of framework of finance functions, how to make finance functions effective, benefits of effective finance functions, drawback of ineffective finance functions. So the next slide. Finance functions are practice, practices and activities 
that I geared towards the management of our organization of financial resources in order, in order to meet its business objectives. So they are just from uh, practices and regulations. They are geared towards the management of organization financial resources. We are to manage the organization resources, resources in order to meet the business objectives. And these functions include various activities such as financial planning, budgeting, forecasting, financial analysis, accounting, and reporting. And these functions, they are based at the university, this has been acquisition, and management of financial resources, contributing to the productivity of other university functions by providing clear and actionable data for planning and decision making. They are designed to ensure the overall financial stability of the university. Next slide. The next item talks about the framework of finance funding. It's about the framework on fund which to realize the objective of an organization rate. And this framework of finance function is part of a set of financial activity and processes that the university follows to manage financial resources effectively. And this function provides a structural approach to financial management, enabling the university to make informed decisions, allocate resources efficiently, and achieve the financial goal. The framework includes but only limited to financial planning analysis. We have financial reporting and compliance. We have treasury management. We have financial operations. Financial risk management, internal controls, and governance. Next slide. And when we talk about financial planning analysis, financial planning analysis is a critical function that involves forecasting, projecting, and analyzing financial data to support decision making. Financial planning analysis helps the university to develop strategic plans. Set nice targets and evaluate performance against those set targets. Involved activities such as budget preparation, variance analysis, financial modeling, scenario planning, management, reporting. In terms of budget planning, I know in, in, in this great university, there is always a time for budget preparation where every budget operator will come and spend. At the end of the day, budget performance will be set. You do your various analysis. Financial reporting. So financial reporting and compliance. Financial reporting and compliance functions ensure that the university financial statements are accurate, complete, and comply with relevant accounting standards and regulations. And when you talk about financial reporting, first, financial reporting must be prepared on a timely basis. Because when it's not prepared on a timely basis, it makes the, 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 the information there be possible. Hopefully, the management can not use position making. So, it's like uh, your quarterly uh, management uh, report to the Finance and Data Purpose Committee, your annual audit report, uh, etc. Next one. Next. Treasury management. Treasury management focus on managing university tax, liquidity, and financial risk. These functions involve activities such as cash flow for passing. Cash management, including optimizing working capital, managing payables and debts, and investment, foreign exchange risk management, and hedging strategy. Treasury management aims to ensure that the U.S. has to be ability to meet its obligations while minimizing financial risk. But this is very important to say that the essence of the operation of the U.S. is that the U.S. has funds to meet the risk in financial operations when when it falls, but must have money to make sure that that seal of the university functions regularly. So the the buzzer has the duty to ensure that money is available at all times to meet the needs of the university by kind of financial planning, financial analysis, and forecast. So next slide. Financial operations encompass various day-to-day -day activities related to managing financial transactions, 
efficiently. This includes accounting, processing suppliers through credit invoices, and making payments, account receivable, managing customer invoices, student debt, and collection, payroll processing, expense management, procurement processing, and general ledger accounting. So that is how it's all about. So financial risk management, financial risk management involves identifying potential risks that imply that will impact a university financial performance or stability. And implementing strategies to make it good fit. This thing includes marketing, managing exposure to fluctuations in interest rates, exchange rates or commodity prices, liquidity rates, ensuring sufficient cash flow to meet obligations and operational risk, identifying and managing risks associated with internal process, system of marriage. There is every organization has inherent risk associated with their risk. The effective financial control will ensure that all these risks are identified, provided, and evaluated, put in place the mitigation measures that in case this end of this risk arises, what are we doing? to reduce the impact of that risk on the activity of the organization. So it is very essential that effective financial planning will address that if you take. Next slide. Financial control. How to make financial functions effective? How do we make financial functions in, in a university effective? Technology adapts. We all know that we are in the age of uh, digital world. So technology has made operations seamless, seamless. So the best thing is that we adopt technology that will be impactful, that will make our operations to be seamless. And then decision making, providing clean, accurate, timely, and actually data to the university administration for decision making. But really, what are we Adopting cost control and cost reduction strategies. Skill, skill mistreatment, having the appropriate professional of skill mistreatment in the poultry department. Growth development oriented, prioritizing decisions and activities that promote growth and development. Of skills, of skilling family, of skilling employees in the poultry department of present and future demand to need. Risk alert, implementation of strategic risk, identification, control, and management uh, process. That's how to make financial function effective. Benefit of effective financial function. When you have effective financial function in place, these are benefits that will approve to that with that organization. Better financial planning and decision making. Increase efficiency and productivity. Improve management of financial resources. Guarantee reliability of financial information improve risk management, enhance transparency and accountability, support strategic growth through development and innovation. Next slide. Drawback of ineffective financial function. So if you have ineffective financial function in place, these are the negativity which we attract. Number one, poor financial planning, budgeting and decision making inefficient financial reporting and controls, limited financial resources and asset capital, leads to fraud, irregularities and error, inadequate risk management, poor financial communication and collaboration, sanction or failure to meet regulatory requirements. And you all know that that one will bring a reputation risk to the organization. Next slide. In conclusion, Effective financial, effective financial function in the planning, controlling, implementation, and monitoring of fiscal policies and activities, including the accounting and audit of revenue, expenditure, assets, and liabilities of organization. It embraces the management of daily financial expenditure of the university as well as controlling the capital expenditure. Conclusion, the habit of the university to achieve its primary objectives and goals will be enhanced with effective financial function. Besides, 
it will facilitate the growth and development. It's therefore imperative to engage in a faith efficient and effective national management function to boost the international and local reputation of UNC and its high rating among its countries. Thank you.
account into our ledgers, I mean the general ledger. I don't know. What we do presently is that we take the bank remittance into our ledgers to actually do our reconciliation. Because what we concern is the bank and the cash flow. I don't know. Maybe there are differences between the, our operational... Yes, can you round up? Can you round up? Yes, sir. So I want to know. I want, to, I want you to educate us how it operates at your end. Thank you, sir. Uh, I've been in some days, so I know what you are talking about. And, and in the uh, reconciliation unit, they are part of the unit under me. So I know what you are talking about. I know uh, there's nothing we can do about it. It's government that introduced them. So, but what I know that they normally send transaction reports. And the um, there's another report they normally send apart from the transaction reports. And when you do your reconciliation, your reconciliation will be in two ways. It's good you said you have student ledger. When you are for all your students. And when they pay, you, you, you debit your account and take it to So first of all, what you must do is that the board payment when you are reconciling, consign the board, the board payment with its transaction report. So and what has you as adopted now is that we don't want to depend on the transaction report. We depend on the on the report of the ICT because you know the system was not in for input all the necessary data before you show up to the gateway. So we get all those reports. And that report is what we use to process to I mean to post into our archive. And then we use that that I mean personal report to reconcile to their work. So there we have differences we have for them and we will provide them. So what we have done is that we don't leave them alone. We, we involve the vice chancellor. When we have issues, I don't know whether you have WhatsApp group with them. We have WhatsApp group with them. The visit is there. So when we have issues with them, we ask them. If they don't report, we write the letter. We write them down. The man name it. So you have to let your VC be aware of what is happening so that you can keep them on board. I know the challenges. The, uh, the gateway provider you are, you are using before, the meter, you don't have that issue. Now we ask them that we want individual transaction to go into our bank ticket and we don't want to pop. So we are still working on that one. So I'm the problem that they will do it. So I know the challenge you are, you are doing. But it just order on the fact that those who are in the I mean, reconciliation want the people who are part in the country who knows what they are doing. That is how you can address that challenge. I know this in your case. You have to ensure that you leave it a concern. You reconcile the four payments. This is really the transaction report. That's just it. So thank you. I don't know if I have attended your. Thank you for your response. And we await the last question. Please, this information needs to be taken. Whosoever intends asking question should ensure that it is our question is brief and concise. We don't want a few of what questions. Let it be simple, direct, and concise. Thank you. Last question. Thank you very much, sir. And my question of Samisa is that what can we do to break the holy crisis? I know in the post office, you know, the visa has mentioned it, that you will receive the query. The other side, I mean, professor, the other one that gave us lecture. So what can we that we should be able to think out of the box. Money is important. Access to money is very, very important. In my institution, my university, I have a terrible experience sometimes. We want to do accreditation. We went out to source for money ourselves. And the only thing that we could do for us is to give us 40,000 naira. And I went to the VC, he approved the, the money. So I was glad that at least we got something. We did the program, we all at the end of the day, we presented our paper. It was returned back that we didn't. Uh, put a spending profile on the something. They say, yes, you want to look for it. For me to go and look for it, see? You want me to go and look for it? I say, no, I just want to see about me. So I see that they say, just, just come up with it. I couldn't access it. 
we went on our way to look for money somewhere to get the job done. So this bureaucracy can create problems and create fortunate. So if you can think out of us, you know, to make things very, very difficult, some people are complaining that the boss ring, we they their head in. The people will approve something, and the boss will say, no, you have not followed the, and of course, that's the whatever. But what can we do to improve the situation? Thank you very much. for giving me this opportunity. Like uh, what many of us did not realize is we need we are not an island. We don't know it all. We are lecturers and if you don't want to be embarrassed, try as much as possible to consult before you begin to put paper, a pen on paper. Like Professor Pago picked me from nowhere and I was the director of Pagania BS. What I did, that was how he got to know me. All through, I was going from one office to the other. I would follow my paper. Many a times, putting up requisition or what I did, all I need to do is, I don't know what the financial regulation says. I will go to the DIA, the Director of Internal Review. Please, see the letter I've written. Uh, is it okay? There are some terms, just one word, to mark whatever you have put up. So it's like they have their own terms that they use at times. I will not put you in trouble. So, like when you consult, when they see, eventually see that paper, they will, you know, they will not claim not to have seen it. I've had a series of times that I will go to the bosser that see what I'm requesting for, but what, how do I go about it? If we are that, they can tell me the first thing we do is to send somebody to, to, to check our budget stand to see if I have any money to spend. Many other times I will go there out with all my data. Okay. I ask also a number of students that are paid this. This is what I'm expecting. This is what I'm asking for. Like that. At times, I will even rewrite the request in his presence before sending it to the VC. And know whoever you are working with. When you know their mentality, there won't be any problem. And audit, audit the way they are. They even query, they have queried the boss in my presence times with that number. So they are the, the watchdog of everybody. Don't be offended. They are just doing their work. But when you know how to go about it, there won't be any, any bottleneck anywhere. So please, let us just know that they are human and work in hand, hand in hand with them. Thank you. In addition, I yeah, answer the question. But what I will say is that academics, it's not your problem to be um, looking for money, how you get money. I don't know whether it's in practice here. What we have at the Cape State University is that every faculty has a faculty finance officer. So before you put up anything, their, their job is to help you write your request. Their job is to help you get your money. So I've had, I mean, uh, occasions, I've had the normal occasions to instruct the, the, the professor and the head of the department. You are not to bring the paper. You are not going. You are not meant to be. I mean, looking for money, whether your money is spent or not. Call your faculty finance officer. They are mini buster in that faculty. They are job. Okay, eh, okay. If they don't have it here, maybe the boss has. But you need to look into it. So, and before you do that, try to see the boss. Whether what you are requesting is right or wrong. So, that's the way out. Thank you, sir. Yes, we appreciate you. It's time for presentation. How do you people follow this book? It's time to be supported by the academic Thank you very much. And thank you, my dear speaker. Well, please, when I was speaking about Wall Street and this, she realized that our job doesn't end there. We have the panel of to check what we are doing. We have the external auditor, which I appointed by the president, come and check our record. We have the state auditor, who will check our record. We have the state assembly, they have to come and check our auditor, our record. The because internal revenue will come check our record. The federal revenue service will come check our record. So if we don't take our time to get it right, we'll be queried. You can be sanctioned. So please just bear with us and we shall improve on that.
On behalf of our PC, Professor Mouro Abisoya, I have presented this to give back to you, and thanks for coming. I believe the God had a word of mistake in this workshop. As we are about moving to the next lecture, title lecture six, slightly that going to be a new sheet away from what it has been as an inception of this workshop. So it's time for final discussion. And I have the honor to please introduce our Deputy Vice Chancellor here in Lagos State University of Science and Technology in the person of Professor Abiyo Dizohi. Please to share this panel session. To we'll join in, Now, some of us are also staff, 
and our relationship with the student goes beyond academic or non-academic. Some of us, our relationship go to the extent of being parents. Because some of us have our students or our children as our students. I waited into a matter just last week, even though I was not on ground in the, in the university, that the parent of a student was making complaint about something that happened in the department of the student, where he is actually not a member of staff, but member of staff elsewhere. And so that's interference. Now, even as academic staff, we have relationship in teaching and learning, I dare say, because some of us learn even from our students at different points. But also, we have relationship in research. I will just highlight one or two things of my personal experiences of this. Yesterday, one of my protege in the church came to me and said, ah, I am applying to social university in the United States. Sir, I want you to write a reference for me. I said, wait, before I write a reference. I opened my phone, called on WhatsApp. I said, well, how are you doing? And the way he, he spoke, oh, I realized I was speaking to somebody in the United States at that time. Should be sleeping. I told him, I told the boy that was in front of me, I said, I just called my student, who was my student for four years, and became my research student during this project. And then he made very good grades, and is now a student at the Michigan State University on the PhD direct by full scholarship. I said, so if you want to talk to him now, you can talk to him. But this kind of thing, I won't talk to you directly from what he has told me. You talk to him by yourself. The young man was very happy. I enjoyed a very good trust student with the with him. Again, another instance is that in my program, zoology, where I have a BSc, MSc, and PhD, BSc, Lasso, MSc, and PhD, University of Lagos. There is a part of the program that is called field trip, during which for at least seven days, and in most cases not exceeding 14 days, we go into the jungle, a controlled environment where the animals are not controlled, and we will be there during the period of the trip. We have done that in different parts of Nigeria and outside Nigeria and not the west coast of Africa. When we were in Bauchi, the Akari game with her, one of my students saw me for the first time in shorts, was stopped. He said, Sir, I can't imagine seeing you in the camp. I said, Why? I said, we are in the field now. This is not a classroom situation. Our classrooms here are under the tree. The good help was started taking photographs. I said, no, when I'm here, it's at a different level. But still, you must remember the category you belong to. I am still your professor. And you are still my student. <laughs> so, you find out that we had that a lot. I have also a student who to me, I became to him rather, his parents is in local. His parents in that particular location at that time. His dad was my senior colleague, Professor Akilai, who brought him to me. I want you to bring up this boy in this discipline. When we were in Calabar in the forest for the field trip, I saw that they go, he, he went on top of a fence because he was looking for, he was searching for network to speak to people at home. 
Because usually when you are there, you are actually said driver. Because you will not be able to communicate because of you know network service will not just be available. So at that point, I called him and said, Come, I have a way by which you can call home. I took him to the information center of the Cross River National Bank. And he was able to speak with them at all. I asked him, have I done that to any other person here? He said, no. I said, because your dad is my uncle, and he told me to be your parent. Here, I am your parent. I am your teacher. I am your daddy in this place. Distinguished participants and panelists, you will agree with me that at this point, for us as teaching and non-teaching staff, we have leadership and mentorship roles also to play. And this also are part of our relationship that we have to maintain and maintain with our students. I have shared with some of us and I'm bold and proud to repeat here that in my department in Lasso, out of the at least 16 lecturers there, not less than 12 of them are my former students. Yes. The reason is that I always maintain a very good relationship with all of them. And yet, everybody has to know where we belong. I know you have your own experiences that you can share and that you can ask questions that you can use to interrogate this topic so that at the end of the day, we will be able to leave this place with more light than heat and let more with ourselves in our teacher, in our staff, student relationship. I leave the floor open for other panelists. They may add one thing or the other, and also the participants can also contribute. Please let us keep our interventions very brief, concise, and within the team of staff student relationship in the universe of excellence that we desire or that suspect to be. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, and once again, I say good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that student relationship, I would say, when a student gains admission into a higher institution like ours, the University of Science and Technology, his first contact is with the staff of the university especially the non-teaching staff. So I say a student has, his relationship starts at the point of admission, and that relationship continues until he or she ends his program of study in university. Because when he ends his study, when he ends his study, his study program in university, he contacts the students after to be mobilized for national youth service. And before then, he gains his uh, is a statement of results or a certificate to be presented at the NYC camp from a non-teaching staff member of the university. So a staff-student relationship is something that cannot be done without. It's something that is compulsory. It's something that is ongoing from the beginning to the end of the student's program in the university. And even it precedes the student's end of program in the university because he or she comes back for it for his transcript or a certificate of the program. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I know the distance of student affairs will have to so be an encyclopedia in this matter. It relates to students. The only thing that is actually approved to have affairs with students. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to start by looking at the whole EU uh, from angle of uh, conception of the EU we are discussing, the student and staff relationship. Because we are trying to look at it from the point of view of uh, 
how we can drive relationship in a way that will fit into uh, world class expectation. When we talk about student staff relationship, that presupposes that there is a interdependence between the staff and the students. There is interaction between the staff and the students. Uh, there is a engagement between the staff and the students. Now, what they are interacting with, what they are engaging in, in depends on the business or the goal of education in that particular institution. And I'm saying that so that uh, we can depart, you know, or drift towards contemporary conception of student staff relationship. If you look at it traditionally, student staff relationship traditionally tilts towards the taxonomy of learning as the spouse by uh, uh, group. Group categorize goals of learning into three. Cognition, affection, and psychomotor activities. Which means, if you look at it from that traditional angle, the interaction is expected to be on the basis of those And then in real cases, if you have problem or if you thought, you see them. I don't think when I was investing, I've ever had any call to see my boss and data for anything. I go there and report, see my result. I see colleagues to register and I walk away. And I don't have any. And the concept of star relationship in the contemporary era that in this, that I can, that I can give you a, a, a university to work now, it, it can, cannot, cannot go that route. The contemporary angle to it now is seeing students start relationship from the point of view of career. Career is career uh, 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 development. Students is no longer seen as just coming to school to learn, obtain certificate and go out. Whether he can do anything with that certificate or not is another thing. If he's lucky, he can get a job. If he can't get job for what that certificate is meant for, it becomes jobless. Then education becomes a scam. Because certificate is no longer useful for other than what is trained for in school. Which is not what the contemporary goal of education is all about. It's about, it's about career. So that when a student comes to school, from the beginning, his engagement should be how to drive him, how to support him, how to coach him towards his intended career. Certificates, at the end of the day, may just be partially useful to his career. But the way we do it now, we still have part of the, the old order, I mean the old order. So what I'm saying essentially is that uh, relationship, personal relationship is beyond just mere relationship is predicated on something and that it should be on the career development of students. Students so have what we refer to as career life cycle. The relationship must start from the first stage to the end. Now the life cycle of the student 
It's not when your student comes and register and you start relating. Relationship starts from the point of when students are deciding or prospective students are deciding on what to do. But like this part of the world now, students go to tutorial centers, go to what we call it uh, uh, special centers. That's where they decide what they want to be, register for or okay, what they want to be in university. Contemporary universities that are, you know, trying to move towards a world class order now are reaching out to them before they even obtain form to cancel them, to coach them, to know, to decide appropriately what they need to do. Why you have big guys in Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria that are very arrogant? You can't expect you like to go to any school to, or to OAU you or UI to tell you uh, what up to you do, whatever. State government just organized a fair, European fair, about two or three weeks ago. You have universities in Europe that have names, come down to Nigeria to come and educate our students. So I give them information on which course they can do, how they can go about to run a career at the end of the day. This is the kind of the, uh, uh, the, the relationship that we ought to be thinking of. And then from there, they come in, then we keep on guiding them. It's not for us to just give them course. This is the number of courses you are going to do this semester. The course advisor, the career advisor department should go beyond that. Students should be interacting. Oh, this is what I want to do. You may be in the same department, for instance, can be in mass communication. And all of you, as students, want to get your degree in mass communication. But you want to do different things with it. Okay, you may want, okay. okay. Sorry, sorry, I have to come in at this time. Because this guy is not taking. I'm, I'm scared. Dr. Teropa will take all our time. In fact, I didn't know that he is uh, also an expert in aspects of education, such as groups, uh, taxonomy of learning. But that's very commendable. <laughs> so I think uh, we need to throw this still, make it available to the uh, Others at that on the other end. But just before you come up, I want to just light it in. I say that the Nigeria were brought in an aspect which has to do with uh, with course advisory. Right? That the mentioned for instance he never saw his course advisor. I don't want you to judge it, but I am wondering is that good or can can it be better? For example. Okay, <laughs> secondly, I also thought that we could look at it within the context of some abuse of privilege or functions that happen in terms of uh, students of the opposite gender. All right, I think we can also look at it like that. But to also, uh, you know, help us in some of these aspects, uh, the TVC and me was written uh, Am I correct? Okay. Then after her, we will have uh, Dr. Van Collin, and then we have from at the end. Huh? Uh, after. Thank you. Shortly, as a teacher, I'm a professor of education, so I just have to cheat this thing. Like, um, all those, we, we need to simplify whatever we want to say here so that everybody can tag along. Like, the major role we are to play that of the local parents, where their parents. And what matters most in teacher student relationship is your personality. What are your personality? The way you dress, the way you talk. Are you accessible at all? What are the roles? What are those things that is worthy of emulation? That's just my point, sir. Thank you very much. I think uh, she really put it in perspective. Um, because I remember very well that at some point, almost all the students in Brazil will choose. They want to choose the lawyer as their supervisor for uh, field experience and even project. You know why? Because um, at different times, I've been consultant to companies, for example, Johnson Wax Industries in the sort of the manufacturers of uh, rake brand of insecticide. And my contract with them is to the extent that if I am in your company premises for one hour, at that time you pay me 5000 
and then you'll be responsible for my lunch and those of my uh, students that will come with me, usually not more than four of them. So even if not for the experience of going to learn, the students know that when we go to the Dr. Mars lunch, lunch is guaranteed. <laughs> and usually also when we come back like that, I will still give them money for their transportation back to their hostel. Even though some of them I knew they didn't need the money because they love this trip. Also at another time, I was consultant of Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria where I worked on the ecological status of four airports of Nigeria with a view to preventing bird strike leading to aviation accidents. Almost all the students wanted to work in that, with me on that because it is guaranteed that as part of the work, I needed to travel from one airport to another airport. Yes, so all I needed to do was to have an on-duty card. Once I land at an airport, uh, uh, at an airport, I don't need to go to the to the terminal building. I can connect with another airline and go to another airport. And if you are the student that is with me at that time, you enjoy the same benefit. So it was a tremendous experience that they also wanted to benefit from. It made them see that oh, so zoology can also be in this kind of thing, and they were enjoying it. So if you want to know the secret of why I have so many students in my department, now you have it. So <laughs> the point is that if in your personality you have made you make them to be able to understand the import of what you are doing, not just for certificate, then you can see that they will also talk along with you. And you have a very good relationship with them. Thank you. Okay, yes, Dr. Bancoli. After Dr. Bancoli, we have Prof. and then after Prof. we have Mrs. Ante Jory. Yes, thank you. Thank you.
And then when we get when we get chatting and testing and handling them the secrets here and there, he knew we did all of those things. He knew we have all of this that but it entailed them to come to me for their problems, for their challenges. One of the students from the Napa came and told me how there was an attempted rape on her in her hostel. And I went further to you know, investigate that at that time. And I, I invited the boy. The boy apologized to her. They were frustrated that it was because the girl was playing hard to get. And he felt that that was the way it would have its way. I said, so are you not happy that you attempted it? Say, well, thank God for the Baba that came to me when he had the noise. He would have regretted him all his life because he became so, you know. So that is just it. All right, so our prop, please. I will have our prop have, uh, let's the prop have the, the microphone. Oh, okay. After the uh, sorry. It's supposed to be the other prop. I did not like it. Yes, I can't give from it. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, uh, this issue you are talking about is very, very important. And it's not something we just uh, click like that. Start the They go beyond this place. From my own little experience, I found out that we have to relate well with our students. Because these students, we don't know what they are going to become tomorrow. I used to tell my students when I want to graduate, I call them, expect those as perfect. I talk to them, I you know, greet them, I wish you well in life. You have to be that little whatever. We are very happy. You know? So please, either we are lecturers or we are administrators, you know, we relate with them at different uh, level. Please, let us treat them very well. Let's see them as our children. You understand? We should never make mistakes of using a foul language on our students. Get out of my office. That then did not forget that good thing in life. So please, let's do well to relate well. Because future relationships exist. You understand? It goes beyond this place. I used to tell my snack, I you can be my boss tomorrow. That's the truth of the matter. You don't know what or what this thing I have in future. They be simply at the be of a company. And you are there looking for one thing or the other. Okay? So please. In my own little experience in my department, presently we want to do accreditation in my institution, in my department. And we ask the new, we will take money. They say, there's no money. All of the truth, there's no money. We know that. What do we do? Okay? We leverage on teach our, our students, alumni. Okay? Just in the last two weeks, we reach out to them. We want to do accreditation. There's no money. And they begin to send in money. Just two days ago, because I'm signaling to the alumni account, somebody sent one billion naira to the department. Just the class, yes, they coordinated themselves. You know, so in the last two weeks or so, we have realized about two million naira just for accreditation. Because they feel that we cannot fail. So when I found the, the, the class, I said, sir, it is a privilege that we have to give back to our great department. You know, that's it's a very good relationship. So if you have treated them so badly, we don't be able to do that never. They won't, they won't okay, you know, forget. So please, the relationship is very, very important. It goes beyond this place. You know, at personal level, departmental level, college, if at the university level, come to OAU, come and see the wonders. The alumni are doing in our, in our institution. A lot of projects being financed by, by our alumni it's because of relationship. So let us invite that culture to build a world-class university, you know, we should treat our students, we should treat them well so that in the future they can always look back to help us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Professor, the mic is coming to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And you have said, student lecturers' uh, relationship is beyond the university. It's beyond the university. I just employ us whatever you can do for these students. See them as teachers. See them as your children. Have the mentality that you have somebody like that at home. Whatsoever the assistant you can give them, give to them. Because you can never know where they can be in the future. Let me give you about two instances. 
I have been doing mother of the day for wedding now, not not two, not three, not four. Just because they will remember the seed I have sown in their life. There was one student that was changing wedding days. I said, why? Say because you have not given me the time to go. I said, ah, why? She has told the, the parents how God has helped me to you know use they use me to help her. And they were changing the time. I said, why? Say because God my baby has not given all the dates. I felt so honored that because of me you are changing your wedding day until I will be available. That can be the highest honor. And sometimes ago I traveled out and uh, when I go to United Kingdom, I went out to just rest. But lo and behold, these children did not allow me to rest. They were just, you know, messaging themselves. Prophet is around. The one that know you know me as from that time. Doctor is around. This and this and that. Lo and behold, they were picking things to come and pick me. The low, you know, the, 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 the little distance that the shortest distance from one to another is about five hours. Instead of them to tell me that I should enter train, they will bring their people, they will bring their people, and their children, their wives, their I look at that and say, what have I done to the life of this Please, I'm begging us, whatsoever you know you can do, Make them your children and you get the reward in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you. Yes, uh, uh, sorry for interjecting again. Like, um, looking at the student teacher relationship, the, another thing that will interact with it is teacher teacher's relationship. Your relationship with your colleagues will be a part for those students. We have seen situations okay. where our okay. colleagues be inciting students against. Their colleagues. Where you run down your colleagues because you have a very close student to you, it's not the, the right thing to do. So, all that, when we do anything, we should remember that there is God in whatever we do. So, if you think because somebody is close to you and you not choose to run down your colleague, the reward is waiting for you. So, we should be very, very careful. Treat all of them equally. Your relationship with your colleagues. We interpret, we be interpreted with so many things with these children. At times, if you don't send them, you will see them coming to tell you about your colleagues. If what your colleagues did not say, they come and tell you, and you now begin to hold that image. So we should be very, very careful. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I will just chip in something with that. You see, yeah, I will call this a day on the show. Um, that was, that's a colleague of mine. The first thing they will do when they enter the classroom, it's fair to run down all the lecturers in this department. I'm telling you, all the lecturers in this department. And they will tell you about how Lagos State University is a mushroom university, it's a glorified secondary school. So, every time when they did that, all the students would keep quiet. But one day it was unfortunate. The students didn't know that it was coming and it was right behind them. And one of them said that at any time because of the classroom, no girls, we will not be talking rubbish about our lecturers. We know now that those who talk rubbish about people also they said they're not better. And then uh, they will be saying that's what they want to do. That is the university where he came from. Why did he not go and lecture there? He had it. So when he had it, it became small. That so this is what these students are saying behind me. Because when they're in the classroom, the students will not administrate the debate and tell it. But among them, they know the writing and they know what response to have given in that situation. So if there's someone here who does that, we need to have everything, just like David Stan just said. Uh, Mr. Sade Johnny, thank you for being patient with us. All right. Clement, can you give the microphone to her? Thank you so much, sir. Uh, talking in terms of staff students relationship, I think to leave nobody in doubt, the university should have a policy that is in black and white. You know, that um, this issue of 
uh, uh, sexual abuse. What somebody might think that, oh, you should be able to tolerate this as a woman or as a girl, it's because I like it. So when somebody is probably, you are touching somebody on the shoulder and the person has said, sir, I don't like it. Let's there be policies so that you don't just ah, she won't be in here and she won't be in here. So that people are not left in doubt. Okay, so, sorry, man. are you putting that in the context of staff, staff relationship or staff students? Staff students student relationship. Staff, you know, I'm sure that a lot of things had happened maybe in the past. I, will, I, I want to believe that it's no longer me. And maybe the, the male, the male involved, does not believe that that, that should be tantamount to sexual abuse. But if it is put down in black and white, that if you do this, especially if the person had, you know, had said, I would not like this to continue, then that person knows that he's already crossing the boundary. There should be policies in black and white. People should not be left in doubt. It's not about if you are a man, I'm a woman, it's a, a, I like you and whatever. So that people are not left in doubt. I know that there are some universities that have those policies. Maybe outside Nigeria, I don't know of. Yes, but last of step, we should have it. It's, uh, it's in the pipeline. Let's know about it. Let everybody be sure. Thank you for that. Um, just before you came on, Lande, can you recover the microphone? Oh, sorry. I called Lande instead of Clement. When Clement is there, you call Lande. All right. So, thank you for that uh, contribution. I mean, it's a day worry. Somebody just whispered to me the other time that is like our people are shying away from the issue of sexual abuse. Uh, and fortunately, it's a little We Yes, I just was going to also uh, inform that I know that at the level of the Senate, there is a policy in the office, and uh, where uh, Professor Agrebi can give us more information about that. Professor Agrebi. Thank you very much, sir. We have this. Uh, policy, sexual harassment Please, policy we have one for the university. And uh, we are waiting for the council to endorse it for us. And therefore, there will be awareness both for the uh, for the staff and for the students. So we are picking the date any time for now. So you can be rest assured. Thank you very much. Now, Sustek is the University of Excellence. And so you can expect excellence in that also. Okay. Sorry, my just before you can come up. DSA, you wanted to give us some. Oh, okay. Alright, ma'am. This is uh, at this time. The job dealing with students, we need to put up a surplus service. Sometimes they come to you, they want to get transcripts. You want to ask questions, you will to be here with them to them, it's very bad. I remember one time when I was in a Santa record, some of our graduates would come and say they want to collect their certificates, maybe around four o'clock. We still wait behind and do it for them. But these days, when students come,